masturbation. The act of sex, stimulating yourself. Usually, this involves the use of pornography, or anything we can conjure up in our imaginations. Both male and female may fall into this habit. Usually, for guys, it's a visual imagery thing. Girls also, might struggle with visuals, or pornographic fiction. But be encouraged, that those of you who is currently watching this episode, who struggle against this stronghold, that you are not the only one who has done it, or even has made a habit of doing it. Masturbation is much more common than you think. But nobody ever wants to talk about it because it's one of those things we keep hidden about ourselves. No one wants to admit it. Does masturbating glorify God? Is it really a sin? How can it be stopped? Or can it be stopped? In this 8th episode, the HN Ministries, will examine a closer look into one of Satan's primary weapons on this generation through, imagery, porn, the internet, and lust of the flesh. And how millions are falling into sin, every single day, without thought, through this very act of sin. So sit back and relax. And open your hearts, minds, and spirits, to receive, and be influenced, by the Word of God. The HN Ministries brings to you Masturbation Masturbation is generally regarded as a sinful activity, due to its connection with lustful behavior. In this episode, we seek to address the question from the opposite angle. Is there ever a situation in which masturbating would not be sinful? First, a person would have to be able to masturbate, without lustful thoughts. Something that is highly unlikely. The Bible never explicitly mentions masturbation, or states whether or not masturbation is a sin. The scripture most frequently pointed to in regards to masturbation is the story of Onan. Genesis. Chapter 38. Verses 9 and 10. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Some interpret this passage as saying that spilling your seed on the ground is a sin. However, that is not precisely what the passage is saying. God condemned Onan not for spilling his seed, but because Onan refused to fulfill his duty to provide an heir for his brother. The passage is not about masturbation, but rather about fulfilling a family duty. A second passage sometimes used as evidence for masturbations being a sin, is Matthew, chapter 5, verses 27 through 30. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish, than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Jesus speaks against having lustful thoughts and then says, If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. There are strong parallels between this passage and masturbation. While the Bible nowhere explicitly states that masturbation is a sin, there is no question as to whether the actions that lead to masturbation are sinful. Masturbation is nearly always the result of lustful thoughts, sexual stimulation, and, or pornographic images. It is these problems that need to be dealt with. If the sins of lust, immoral thoughts, and pornography, are forsaken and overcome, masturbation will become a non-issue. 
Many people struggle with guilty feelings concerning masturbation, when in reality, the things that led to the act are far more worthy of repentance. There are some biblical principles that can be applied to the issue of masturbation. Ephesians. Chapter 5. Verse 3 declares. Among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity. It is hard to see how masturbating can pass that particular test. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. If you cannot give God glory for something, you should not do it. If a person is not fully convinced that an activity is pleasing to God, then it is a sin. Romans. Chapter 14. Verse 23. But he, who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith, for whatever is not from faith is sin. Further, we need to remember that our bodies have been redeemed and belong to God. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6. Verses 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This great truth should have a real bearing on what we do with our bodies. In light of these principles, the conclusion that masturbation is a sin is biblical. Clearly, masturbation is not glorifying to God, it does not avoid the appearance of immorality, nor does it pass the test of God's having ownership over our bodies, rather than seeking a loophole or a way to make masturbation acceptable as a Christian. Christians are called to, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. To and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect will of God. Further. 1 Corinthians 6.18 teaches we are to flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Also 1 Thessalonians 5.22 tells us to abstain from every form of evil. Scripture calls all believers to resist temptation rather than to seek ways to excuse sin. 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 13, is clear. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. When temptation comes, there is also a way of escape. Even when Jesus Christ was tempted after 40 days of fasting, he relied on God's truth to stand against temptation and follow God's will. So while there may be a possibility that spouses living apart from one another could masturbate without adulterous or lustful thoughts, it would seem from scripture it is better to refrain. As the Apostle Paul advised in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22, Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Ever wonder and ask yourself how can you stop? The first step is that you must to want to stop. If we don't have a conviction to change our behaviors, then nothing anyone says to us will make any difference. If you're having a half-hearted notion that you might want to stop, then ask God to convict you through the Holy Spirit. Confess to God, think about why you do it. What need are you trying to fulfill? Maybe you were bored, or lonely, or curious, or just wanted to experiment and see what happened. Maybe the good feeling you got afterward is what makes you go back and do it again and again just to feel something exciting for once. 
maybe it's grown into an addiction, and now you find that you need to masturbate in order to feel good at all, feel special, or even just to fall asleep in happiness, whatever the reason, find it. Acknowledge it. Confess to God that you need a replacement to fulfill that need something other than masturbation and pornography. Ask God to cleanse, renew, and transform your mind. Sex is not evil. Sex was invented by God, that's why our bodies desire it. But God's command is that it is only to be enjoyed in the context of marriage. Sex outside of marriage causes all kinds of emotional and spiritual turmoil that does not help us in our relationship with him. Once you're married, you and your spouse will be able to fulfill each other's sexual needs. Find a Christian friend in whom you can confide about this problem. And who will pray for you and help keep you accountable. Make sure this is a person you trust to call you out, check on you, and tell you like it is. That's very important. A friend who will let you get away with things doesn't make for a very good accountability partner. This concludes our 8th episode. Pleasure for pleasure's sake, is empty. Worthless? And only lasts as long as it takes until the next time. There are much better things to fill you up than masturbation. But don't despair. My friend. You really aren't alone call out to Jesus. God will give you strength to overcome.